All righty. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. Here we go. Who are we doing today? We're doing still the lovely and ever so talented, slow as molasses, Laura Todd. Oh, my God. What a piece of work. Um, yeah. If you've been watching her, James complained at me the other day, said that I asked some simple question. He forgot what it was. And the woman literally zoned out for like 20 seconds and he fell asleep. So he had to like go back and rework things. But anyway, that's how exciting Laura Todd is. But, but I don't know where you are yet with part six. It does get better, especially when we start whipping out her text messages and stuff like that. Anyway, before we get to that, James is having me put this out there. We are looking for donations to our machine. We're actually actually are building in the in the midst of building a AI platform, a little chat bot that's trained on specifically trained on legal stuff that will release to the Patreon subscribers at any level and the YouTube members at any level to ask questions stuff like that, whatever else you would do with, with an AI chatbot. But anyway, that's the project we're working on. If you'd like to donate to the project, help us out. That is the link at PayPal. Um, for YouTube members and Patreon subscribers, you guys are already kind of helping us out because all of the membership fees and renewals are going into hardware to further support our system. We had to build a couple new computers that have a bunch of, you know, NVIDIA graphics cards. We want to con continue adding to that. Ultimately, I'd like to have a 12 card system for our training machine. And uh, yeah, we're slowly adding to that, working on it. It's just taking time, but we are getting there. What else do we have? Patreon, Patreon subscribers. That is a place for people who are either attorneys getting into this sort of work or pro se litigants who are in the midst of their own battles. And essentially what it is, we post um, not all of, but a lot of our work product, both successful and unsuccessful, along with the entire public docket, actually. So you have the court orders. So if we lost something, you'll, you know, be able to read the order. Why did we lose? What did we, you know, need to fix or whatever? But it's a really good first point of departure for your own research. And for those of you who are drafting complaints, it is a good place to get a template for putting together your own complaint. There is never any reason to spend all the time and effort to reinvent the wheel on this stuff. We have literally litigated almost every issue you're going to ever see in one of these cases, and it's all right there. So it's something at least worth looking at. Um also, James has another note here. He's begin he's begun adding no ads, full volume depots for Patreon and YouTube and YouTube members on your respective subscription platform. So, if you're a Patreon subscriber and you want no ad, full depot volumes, they are there for you. Same thing if you're a paid member here on YouTube, the full volume depots are now available to you. So he's he's getting that up there for you. Uh, yes, Victor, is the Disney princess sitting in on this depot? Yeah, they both attended each other's depot. Hey, Lawrence, thank you, man. Thanks for the super sticker. Much appreciated. That will go directly into the AI chat bot pot. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, for anybody that has any questions or comments or anything as you're going through tonight's video or any other video on the channel for that matter, please do email those questions into capsandstemslaw at gmail.com. That's capsandstemslaw at gmail.com. And we'll try to respond to those questions during the lives during the week. For Patreon subscribers, that's an added benefit to you of being a Patreon subscriber is that you can use the messages tab in Patreon and the Patreon platform. It'll send an email notification to both me and James, and we try to get to those questions or comments or things as quickly as we can from the Patreon subscribers. So you don't necessarily have to wait until the next live stream when I'm on. I'll actually try to respond to you right away. 
Um, what else do we have? Remember, for anybody asking questions, please try to keep them general and not specific to the facts of your case, because that starts looking like I'm giving legal advice. And I want to steer away from that, unless you're a client. With respect to, there's another comment I had. Oh, with respect to your questions, actually make them questions. A lot of times people write like a two or three paragraph statement and then kind of tag a question mark on the end of it saying, right? And it's like, well, you know, that's like watching Congress or something. They don't really know how to ask questions there. And they'll make their political statement or whatever and then just put an interrogative participle at the end of it. Don't do that. If you actually want to get meaningful information out of me, ask a question. I, I will respond to the question. The statements I have a little bit of trouble with because I mean, I mean, that's really just an opinion. I may or may not agree with it. I may not even understand what you're asking. So if you have a question, ask the question. Um, oh, for those of you who are not yet subscribed to Patreon, it is very much worth it. And I would suggest a subscription. And if I can get it figured out here how to copy and paste the link, I will do that. But I am... Yeah, Lawrence, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, what am, why is this not working? What the fuck? Well, I'll figure it out later. Let's get going with the video. And it's 30 minutes long. And let's get to it. It's our wonderful new girlfriend, Laura Todd. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Wrong button. I'm struggling tonight. Damn. There we go. Do you remember hearing about Dr. Wong having been sued on multiple occasions relative to her involvement in making child abuse allegations? Had you heard about that prior to July 2015? Objection has to be answered. Objection calls for speculation. I'm just going to do a running objection on all these questions with regards to Dr. No, you, yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. fine. In fact, I'll stip. You, you can have every objection on God's green earth that could ever be come up with. That's that's fine. So can I have the question reread, please? Question: Do you remember hearing about Dr. Wong having been sued on multiple occasions relative to her involvement in? making child abuse allegations, had you heard about that prior to July 2015? I don't recall when I, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't recall when I heard about it. You don't recall when you first heard about it? Correct. Okay, it could have been prior to July 2015, you just don't remember. That's correct. Okay, but by now, today, that is something that you're aware of, that you've heard about, and you know that for, for certain. That she's heard it? Mm hmm That I've heard it, yes. Okay. You didn't do anything to follow up to figure out whether or not um, those cases had been resolved or whether or not she paid money or anything like that, right? I don't know anything about that, no. Have you ever talked to anybody or heard from anybody within your agency or that you work with within your agency that uh, Dr. Wong might be an unreliable witness? I'm sorry, can you restate the question? Okay, before I restate the question, I want to do a shout out here for Ada Tropowicki. She just gave us a $20 donation on PayPal. Thank you very much, Ada. That will go right into the kitty for the AI machine. Very, very kind of you. Very much appreciated. Sure. Can I have it reread, please? Have you ever talked to anybody or heard from anybody within your agency or who you worked with within your agency that Dr. Wong might be an unreliable witness? No. Okay. So even though you'd heard that she'd been sued and you'd heard of a situation where she'd said one thing and then changed it and said something else later, did that cause you at any point to cast doubt on her reliability as a witness? No. Okay, and even today you don't doubt her reliability as a witness? No. Let's take a little break.
We're off the record at 1 11 p.m. Sorry. Can We're back on the record at 2.04 p.m. Okay. Now, when you spoke with Dr. Wong that night, that was July 8th, 2015, right? Yes. Okay. When you spoke with Dr. Wong that night, did she give you any indication as to the what she thought might be the cause of the injury suffered by No. So at that point in time that evening, all you knew, at least at that point in your investigation where, where you'd spoken to Dr. Wong, all you knew is that the baby had been injured, CT scan had been done, revealed the skull fracture and uh, cranial bleeding, um, and that other tests were still waiting to be completed. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, at that point in time, Dr. Wong had not said anything about what she believed might be the cause of the injury. That's correct. Okay. What happened next after you finished your conversation with Dr. Wong? What happened from there? After, um, <clears throat> after the nurse, Heng Trin, and I had spoken with Dr. Wong, then I called and contacted uh, dispatch with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department to report that had an unexplained injury and to ask if they wanted to send an officer or a deputy to to respond and assist with the investigation. Okay. Do you recall who you spoke with at dispatch? I don't recall the dispatcher's name, no. Okay. Did you receive any um, call back from anybody at LA County Sheriff's? after you made that call to dispatch? I don't recall if it was the one phone call and I was informed that someone would be dispatched or if I received a follow-up call and then was told that a deputy would be dispatched. Do you remember just roughly when it was that you made that call to dispatch? I don't recall the exact time frame, I believe. For an estimate, it might have been around 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Okay. And your conversation, I think I asked you this, and you said 15 to 20 minutes, but do you recall how long your conversation with Dr. Wong was? All right, she can answer again. I believe it was 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And it was after that 15, 20, or 2, 20 minute uh, conversation with Dr. Wong that you made the call to LA County Sheriff's Dispatch? That's correct. How long after? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, how long after you completed your conversation with Dr. Wong was it before you decided and made the call? to the sheriffs. I forgot what a numb nut this woman was. Oh my God. How long was it? I'm sorry, can you re-ask the question? It's like, what the hell? Are you kidding? I believe it was right after my conversation with Dr. Wong. So pretty much immediately? Yes. Okay. What did you do next after you made that call? I was advised that a deputy would be dispatched to come to the hospital. So I believe at that time I waited until the deputy arrived at the hospital. Now the hospital's down in Orange County, right? Yes. And the child was in the hospital in Orange County, right? Yes. Why, was, why did you decide to call the LA County Sheriff's? My understanding is and jurisdiction would have fallen to that agency based upon where the parents resided with the children. Is that something that you uh, came to an understanding on 
well, let me ask you this. Is that something where you made the decision on your own that evening to call LA County Sheriffs, or, or did you talk to somebody before you called LA County Sheriffs? Were you instructed to call LA County Sheriffs? The social service agency policy and procedure includes reporting to law enforcement if there's a suspect, suspected abuse, mm -hmm. physical abuse or sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding that the jurisdiction or the agency that would be investigating that abuse would be based upon where the abuse possibly occurred. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, my best estimate would be the home address. So. Typically, in that situation, if I contacted the law enforcement agency that I thought had jurisdiction, I would provide them with the home address, and they would confirm whether or not that was their jurisdiction. Okay, and you, you followed, at least to the best of your recollection, you followed that basic procedure here? Correct. Okay. And why is it that once you made the phone call, you didn't just continue on in your investigation? Our agency's policy is to wait for law enforcement if law enforcement is known to be responding so that there can be a joint investigation. Why is that? Why do you want a joint investigation? Well, if there is going to be a criminal investigation, then law enforcement has the discretion to tell me not to interview someone and I needed to wait until the deputy was going to arrive to find out whether they wanted to interview persons together or how the investigation would continue. Okay, so at that point in time, you're sitting there waiting for law enforcement. All you knew is that this child had been injured and it was potentially due to some sort of trauma to his head. Is that right? Yes. Okay, Dr. Wong hadn't told you anything about, you know, what she suspected regarding any kind of mechanism of injury or the cause of the injury yet, right? Objection the state's your testimony. Dr. Wong had told me that it was <clears throat> that the injury to would have been the result of some type of blunt force trauma and that there had been no explanation provided causing yeah. that injury. Okay, so but blunt force trauma, that could be anything. That's a hit to the head basically, right? When you say blunt force trauma, what do you understand that to mean? My understanding would be either something hard would have hit the head or the head would have hit the hard object. Right. He hit his head on something or somebody hit him with something, right? That would be my understanding, yes. Okay. So I'm correct then that at that point in time, there was no indication as to what it was that caused that blunt force trauma. That's correct. Okay. And there was no indication as to who it was, if anybody, who caused that blunt force trauma. That's correct. Okay. How long did you wait for the uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff's to show up? When did they finally show up? I don't recall the exact time, but mm -hmm. an estimate, probably about 30 minutes. Do you know where they dispatched from? I think it was from a station in Cerritos, but I'm not. I'm not positive that that's where he was dispatched from. You remember what day of the week this was? No, I think it, it may have been the middle of the week, like a Wednesday <coughs> or Thursday. And then you don't remember exactly what time it was that the deputies arrived? No, I don't recall the exact time. And which specific number was that? Because I think he wrote it up in his report. Yeah. And two. Is it two? Give me one second here. Uh, 
Okay, do you recall speaking with, can't read the type writing. Now I really do need my glasses. Do you recall speaking with a Jason Schmoker? Yes. <clears throat> yes, Deputy Schmoker. Was that the first uh, law enforcement officer that you spoke with that evening? Yes. <clears throat> Have you ever read his report? Yes. Okay, when's the last time you read his report? I read his report in preparation for this deposition. How long ago? Mm, probably a couple weeks ago. When's the last time you read his report? When's the last time you read his report? That was the question. I don't recall the exact date, but it may have been as recently as a week or two ago. Okay. And when was the first time you read his report? Mm -hmm. After it was provided to me, after I was aware of this litigation. Okay. You did not review his report, though in the context of conducting your investigation way back in 2015, right? His report wasn't written at that point. Okay. When was his report written? I don't know the exact date, but when I, <clears throat> when I completed the investigation narrative that I wrote for my investigation, his report wasn't available at that point. Okay. What other documents did you review in preparation for your deposition here today? I reviewed the investigation narrative that I had written, <clears throat> CWS uh, contacts, which were related to the interviews I completed for my investigation, uh, social service agency policy and procedures, training information, Deputy Schmacher's police report, copies of the applications for petition for Bruno, What about the petition itself? Did you review that? No. Okay. You mean the juvenile? Yeah, the juvenile dependency, dependency petition. petition, right. Okay, let me make sure I've got this right. The documents, the, the totality of documents that you reviewed in preparation for your deposition here today would include the investigation narrative the CWS CMS contact notes relative to your investigations, the policies and procedures, the training, Detective uh, Schmoker's report, and the application for a petition. Is that right? That's correct. Anything else that I've missed on that list that you've reviewed in preparation for your deposition? I believe there were a couple forms that I completed at Orangewood Children's Home related to authorizing visitation and phone calls. You didn't have anything to do with uh, authorizing the medical examination, did you? No. Okay, that came after you. Correct. Is that right? Yeah. Do you know who it was that actually did authorize the medical examination? On I'm going to object to those rent calls for any uh, communication from my office, if you know the answer that question outside any communication you have with my, me or anybody at my office, you can answer. Would you even understand that admonition? <laughs> Lord, I'm not sure I understood it. That's why I'm asking okay, you. Okay. <laughs> um, make objection calls for attorney client communication okay. to the extent you can answer the question without. Yeah, let me clarify the yeah. question so it's clear that I, I, I don't care what your attorneys told you. I mean, I, we all have our own view of what happened here. We've all got the documents and, and we can all read them and kind of figure it out. What I'm looking for is what you know irrespective of what your attorney may have said to you in a conversation or an email or whatever. So that's my question. Do you know who it was without reference to your conversations with your counsel? 
you know who it was that uh, authorized the medical examination? No, I don't know. Okay. As a matter of policy, I mean, you, you're familiar with the policies that govern um, warrant requirements in Orange County, right? Warrant requirements in relation to the social service agency, yes. Yes, of course. Um, and you have a bunch of different types of warrants that you know you have to get to do certain things, right? Yes. Okay, for example, you, you have to get a warrant to go into somebody's home as part of your investigation unless there's an exigent circumstance or consent, right? That's correct. To seize a child from its home or from the custody of its, its parents, its caregivers, you also have to have a warrant unless there's an exigent circumstance or that person consents, right? This is according to your training. We can That's go through correct. the training if you think we need to. But That's I, correct. I'm right about that, yeah? Yes. Okay. And you also need to get a warrant to do a medical examination of a child unless there's consent or exigent circumstances, right? Or court order. Let me rephrase the question because I thought it was clear. Actually, let's just reread the question and look, listen very carefully for that word warrant or court order. But go ahead and reread the question, please. Question. And you also need to get a warrant to do a medical examination of a child unless there's consent or exigent circumstances. All right, you have to get a warrant if you're going to do a medical exam of a child unless you have exigency or consent. Or another court order. That would come later, though. We're talking about in the ER circumstance, emergency response, or even before the detention hearing. First of all, let's lay a foundation. You know what the detention hearing is, right? Yes. As the emergency response worker, do you write a detention report? No. Okay, who does that? Who writes the detention oh. report? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We refer to it as an intake social worker. So there's another senior social worker who would be assigned to the case after the emergency response portion was completed and it was promoted to a case. OK, and then at the detention hearing, that's supposed to happen within 72 hours of the seizure of the child. Is that right? Within 72 uh, business hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it's at that point in time, for example, if a medical examination, a non-emergency medical examination were necessary, it's at that point in time that the court will typically issue such an order. Is that right? Objection to make complete hypothetical. You can answer. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question again? Sure. Question. And is at that point in time, for example, if a medical The court can issue an order at the detention hearing allowing a medical examination of a child, yes. Let me try this a different way because it's actually a really simple concept and I think maybe we're just being too complex for <coughs> what we have going on here. Am I correct, according to your training and all the written policies at your agency, that in order to lawfully conduct a medical examination for a child, there must be a court order of some kind, I don't care what you call it, a court order, consent, or exigent circumstances. Objections vague as to time. Go ahead. Currently, or at the time of this case? What was the law when you t were involved with this child in 2015? That's what we're talking about, right? And I think that's been the law since Wallace in 2000. So mm -hmm. if you really want to get down to it, I don't think time matters for this case. Anyway. That being said, can I have the actual question reread, please? Question. Am I correct, according to your training and all of the policies at the agency, that in order to lawfully conduct a medical examination for a child, there must be a court order of some kind? I don't care what you call it, a court order of consent or extra. Exigent 
detail. Okay. And the first time you ever learned that, that you had to have a court order to medically examine a child in the absence of exigency or consent, the first time you ever learned that was November, December 2015. Like you told me that earlier, right? That's correct. Okay. You know, going back to your conversation with Detective Schmoker, when he showed up at the hospital, you said it was about half an hour after your conversation with Dr. Wong, is that right? To the best of my recollection, yes. And you don't remember exactly what time of day that would have been, am I right? I don't recall the exact time, I believe it was early evening. Okay. <clears throat> her email or her text messaging. I think that's 72. Do you recall having any kind of conversations with law enforcement before 9.38 p.m. on July 8th, 2015? I believe it was prior to 9.30 that I was speaking with Deputy Schmacher. Okay, okay. Do you recall reviewing your uh, text messages in preparation for your deposition here today? Yes. Okay, so that should be added to the list of documents. Yes. Is there anything else now that we've discovered that there was at least one document you didn't uh, divulge to me? Is there anything else other than the investigation narrative, the CWS, CMS contact notes, the policies, procedures, the training, Detective Schmoker's report, the application for a petition, the text messages, and various forms from Orangewood? Is there anything else in that universe of documents that you reviewed in preparation for your deposition here today that you have not yet told me about? Not that I recall, no. Okay. So I'm going to show you what will mark as exhibit 22, or 72, rather, to your deposition. <clears throat> and I'll ask you first, uh, you can sort of skip the first two pages, or three pages, or four pages there, actually. And look through the balance, it's Bates number 760RG005167 through 760RG005173. If I can get you to turn specifically to page bearing Bates number 760RG005168, that's where we're going to begin. Now you see at the top of the page there it says uh, new iMessage, first of all. Do you see that there? Yes. And there's a time right above that, 1104. Do you see that? Yes. What is that in reference to, if you know? I don't know. Okay. Then right below that, there's a two line, says Laura Todd. You see that? Yes. It's dated July 8th, 2015 at 9.38 p.m. Is that right? Yes. It says, waiting for detectives, get to hospital, can't make contact with nanny till clear with them. First, did I read that correctly? Yes. Who is that writing? Is that something that is being written to you, or is that something that you are writing to someone? That was something that I was writing to someone. And who were you writing to at 9.38 p.m. on July 8, 2015? I was texting to Nicole Stratman, who was my supervisor at the time. 
So as of 9.38 p.m. On, on July 8, 2015, am I correct that at that point in time when you sent her this text, you were still waiting for detectives to get to the hospital? That's correct. Okay, and somebody had told you not to talk with the nanny until you cleared it with the detectives, is that right? That's correct. Who was it that told you not to talk to the nanny? Deputy Schmacher. Was that on telephone? What, how did that happen? No, Deputy Schmacher was at <clears throat> Chalk Hospital in person. Okay. Okay, so these detectives we're talking about, that's somebody other than Deputy Schmacher. That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> If we go back one page to 76ORG005167, and you see here there's an entry that says to Laura Todd, but we actually know that's from you, Laura Todd, right? Yes. And the date is July 8th, 2015 at 8.33 p.m. You see that? Yes says, hi, Nicole, it's Laura, finishing at hospital with LA Sheriff's Sib in Long Beach with MGM needs C. First, did I read that correctly so far? Yes. And MGM, that's maternal grandmother? Yes. Okay, and Sib, that's sibling? Yes. That would have been in reference to... That's correct. Okay, then it also says, Father fly into LAX right now from out of town. Did I read that right? Yes. What were you trying to express to um, your supervisor by that statement? That FA, that's father, right? Yes. Okay. What were you trying to express to her by saying, Father fly into LAX right now from out of town? What I had been informed by Mrs. Bruno was, <clears throat> excuse me, was that the children's father, Mr. Bruno, was returning from out of town and was supposed to be flying into LAX airport. Did she that tell same you? Same evening. Okay. Did she tell you how long he'd been out of town? From my recollection, I believe it had been since July fifth. Well, there we go. That was fun. Just got to the text messages. That uh, was an exciting moment for this crazy woman. Sorry, I was busy eating a piece of cherry pie and it got like all over the place. All right. Well, what do we have for questions tonight? Uh, have one from Jessica Ramos from capsandstemslaw at gmail.com. Says, on the SDMs, such as the safety and risk assessments, I noticed that there is a section for the assessment date, and a little further down, there's a section for last updated. Yes, that's correct. Is it normal? And this is all going to be on the heading. It says, is it normal for the assessment date and the last update to be several weeks apart? That does happen sometimes. It should not, but it does. Does that mean the CFS worker workers update the uh, these SDMs to favor their reasoning for detainment. Well, that's always been my supposition is that, I mean, why would you need to update it unless you were backtracking to fill in some bullshit thing that you didn't think of at the time? But who knows? I mean, got to depose these people to actually find out why they made those sorts of updates. And that does come up in the depositions. Next question is, also, are there original copies that exist in the system that are saved before any changes or updates are made? Yeah, there are. Actually, uh, there's a, um, <clears throat> what do you call it? There's a quality control mechanism that's called safe measures, and that records every event that's entered into the system, including updates, changes, things like that. So there is a mechanism through discovery you can get the safe measures reports and on those reports you can see when things originally happened when they were supposed to happen 
and then any other entries or updates or changes that were made along with the date and the person who made them. I think the substance of the change is only saved for like 60 days or something like that, but you can see still it's preserved in perpetuity, the date of the change and who made the change. <clears throat> Next question. On the SDMs, that's structured decision-making tools, there is also a category for assessment type, which consists of three options to click, the initial assessment type, the review update assessment type, and referral closing assessment type, right? I know the names might be self-explanatory, but I wanted to double check to see what are the differences between each. <laughs> um, that I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the manual to actually give you a specific answer, but we do have the manual. And if you send an email to James at capsandstemslaw at gmail.com and ask him to publish it on Patreon, then it will be there available for your perusal and viewing pleasure. That's something that we can do upon request. In fact, for anybody, if you're a Patreon subscriber, um, we do take requests. So if there's a specific case that we've worked on or a brief that you'd like to see or a PowerPoint presentation or like this, a um, um, <clears throat> the manual, the use manual for the program, just shoot us an email request and we will get that taken care of. Let's see if we have here... Wasn't there a truth teller in this case? I think the truth teller, this is um, to Victor, Victor Roth. His question is, wasn't there a truth teller in this case? He had referenced one, I think, in Irma, uh, one that squealed on a liar. I was looking for her depo. That, her depo was actually taken in Randall versus County of Orange, where she and Trilicia Finch, not Trilicia Finch, what the hell was that woman's name? I don't know, it was the black lady who we had on here in Rachel's case. Uh, God, we had her on like a week ago, maybe. I don't remember her name. It wasn't Trilicia Finch. That's a crazy woman that we've got in another a defendant that we have in a case against San Bernardino. That's why she's fresh on my mind. Ah, Maisha Hammond. We did Maisha Hammond's deposition in Rachel's case as part of our Monell claim to demonstrate that even though she'd been caught lying, there was no further discipline and there was no training that came about as a result of her lying. And it was her, her boss. I think it was uh, Irma Salazar Allen, honest woman, exudes credibility and honesty, came right out in her depot and said, yeah, that woman's a liar. Never happened. Never did it. Never said it. She's a flake. And so we did not redepose her in Rachel's case, as we didn't need to. All, all we really needed to demonstrate was that Hammond hadn't been disciplined for what she did. And uh, yeah, God, that Hammond was nuts. Holy crap. Uh, let's see if we have anything else. Yeah, it's Irma. Irma Salazar Allen, I think that was her name. But we did not depose her in her case. <laughs> Mm, all has been audit log of changes. Absolutely. Steve Kelsey, uh, are you a programmer? If so, contact us offline. We're looking for help on our AI tool. And Fuck. I'm muted. That sucks. So I went through all those questions on mute. Damn. Uh, okay. I don't know. How much of that did you guys hear? Uh, when did when did I drop off? What was the last thing I said? Can you hear me now? Hello, 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 hello. Fuck. God damn it. I don't even know where I left off. Did we make it through the question? 
Ah, uh, hello. Okay, just the last 30 seconds. Good. Uh, so I don't remember what I was talking about. Shit, that scared the crap out of me. I thought I was going to have to go back and redo everything. Oh, anyway. Uh, let's see. 30 seconds would have been where... Oh, I think 30 seconds. Did you guys hear when I was talking about how they get either laterally moved or promoted if we sue them? And we have a running joke around here that the best thing that can happen to a government social worker is for us to sue them because then they're going to get promoted off the line and away from anywhere where they can generate liability. And yes, programmer, somebody, let's see who it was. I think Steve. Steve, 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 hold on, let's see. Steve Kelsey, yeah, he was talking about how I uh, had written some programs for the county and they always have an audit trail. And my comment was, oh, are you a programmer? Yes, contact me uh, offline uh, because we're working on our AI project. It requires some coding in Python. James is busy learning how to do that. But it sure would be nice to have uh, some help. You know, things inching along, but it would be nice to have some help. So anyway, if you are familiar with Python or you have experience uh, training an AI model, it would be great to hear from you. So anyway, I think that is it for tonight. I don't see any more questions either in the chat or in James's little read on here. So I am going to bug out. Thank you all for attending tonight's stream. Please share the Patreon link one more time is the message here from James. So I will do that. that. Copy and paste. Oh, well, that's disappointing, Stephen. Um, yes, it was a test to see if you're listening. And now I know that you are. Uh, answer once and for all, Sean, why didn't you sue the nanny? Um, because she probably didn't have any money. And I mean, we can spend time and money tilting at windmills, but it's always better if there's a pot of gold under the windmill. And, uh, you know, that was the big thing. I think that we would have deposed her. I don't remember what the plan was, but I think we were going to depose her. And then we went into a mediation or something like that. Um, you probably remember better than I do. But I think that was the plan. Also, she was kind of hot. I mean... No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> I know people hate that answer, but it's the truth. I mean, be pragmatic. You got to be pragmatic about these things. And you know this because um, you guys paid the bills. I mean, every deposition costs $5,000. And if you don't get something good or useful out of it, it's wasted money and wasted time and wasted effort. And you only have so much stamina also in one of these cases, both the, the attorney and the client. I mean, you know how much stress it costs to, you know, sit through these depots and deal with all this stuff. And every depot compounds that problem. So, you know, you have to be a little bit judicious about where you're, where you're going to, you know, what targets you're going to shoot, I guess is a good way to put it. But, um, if you're not, you want to be able to maximize your resources. I guess that's the that's the easiest way to put it is you want to be able to maximize the resources available. And, and nobody has unlimited resources. I, I can tell you right now, even freaking Elon Musk probably couldn't break him, but uh, could probably spend enough time and money working one of these cases for him on one of his six kids. Um, that he would feel uncomfortable with it. So, so yeah, yeah, you always have resource limitations and you have to, you know, evaluate your targets and devote those limited resources to where you think you're going to get the biggest bang for the buck. So that, that's basically the idea. And that's, that's the main reason that we did not depose the nanny up front. That's the main reason that we didn't depose Schmoker, you know, we didn't need to, to get what we needed to get these guys, you know, basically get them by the short hairs. So anyway, thank you all very much for attending tonight's stream. And uh, what else do we have tomorrow? We're still with Laura Todd. This tomorrow should be pretty interesting though, because we're just getting into the emails 
and she does some gnarly shit in her in her or text messages, and she does some gnarly shit in her text messages. All of these workers are so dumb because electronic messaging is like perfect for discovery because everything they say, do, think, whatever, whatever they write in there, we're gonna get it all, and then we're gonna shove it up their ass on video. And then we're going to publish it on YouTube. So it's like, oh, my God, you people. Come on, man. Use your brain. But uh, anyway, it should be fun. tomorrow. I think tomorrow night and probably the night after because he does these in 30-minute clips. So it'll probably take about an hour to get through all the text messages. Um, remember, if you have any questions, please do email them in to capsandstimslaw at gmail.com. And, you know, we're always happy to answer them, give me something to talk about here besides uh whatever else i would normally talk about which probably isn't very exciting but um anyway yeah send your questions in if you would uh just a reminder if you look right below the video there's a video description if you click or tap show more there's a ton of links to catch up on or view past videos as well as that all important patreon link that james keeps pushing on me if you guys are enjoying the content, this is also important because we're trying to grow the subscribership. James watches that stuff. It makes him feel validated and important and meaningful if we get a lot of subscribers. So please do show your support by liking, sharing with your friends, commenting, subscribing, encouraging your friends to do so. And uh, we'll see where this project goes. With that, you guys have a wonderful evening. I don't know if I'll be on the live tomorrow night or not. I probably will be, actually. But um, anyway, have a great rest of your evening. If I don't see you, have a wonderful Saturday as well. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow night for the rest of those text messages. Y'all have a good night.